Now we'll look at the controller's web interface. We start in the same project file as the previous videos. Once you've uploaded your project, you want to be sure that it's set up and working properly. For this you can use the built-in web interface, available for every controller. In the Network tab, click the Web Interface menu item, or type the IP address of your controller into any web browser that is connected to the same network as your Pharos controller. This also works on mobile devices. The controller's web interface is shared from your controller to your web browser, without needing to be connected to the internet. The home page shows detailed information about the hardware, and the project. The project status page is a detailed overview of the status of timelines, scenes, and group intensities. It is telling us that no timelines are running, scene blue is started, and all groups are at 100% intensity. The log page has a filterable running log of the history of the controller's operation. It has different log levels and filter options to help you see and find just what you need, to verify the behavior of the system. The output tab allows you to view the exact DMX or EDMX levels currently being outputted by the controller. This is a great place to double check correct data is being sent to a non-functioning fixture. The input tab shows the status of inputs, and gets live updates. The network tab allows you to see other controllers and remote devices, relevant for multi-controller projects, or when using remote devices. The control tab allows you to control the installation and test triggers live. All triggers are available, and a simple click will fire them. You also have the option to test conditions and whether they are valid. Remember the trigger programmed in the trigger video that used a condition? As we've seen on the project status page, the red left scene is not active. As the condition is not valid, we expect the red right scene not to start. We can check that in the project status, and as expected, the red right scene has not started. Now let me close Digital Input 2, which will start the red left scene, as we can see here. Let's try the same trigger again, now that we know the condition is valid. We can confirm the red right scene has now started. And if we check the log, we can see the full history. The File Manager tab allows you to store data on your controller. For example, you could store relevant project drawings, PDF data sheets, or other documents that you might like the next programmer to have access to. The Configuration tab is similar to the configuration options you have in Designer. It allows you to adjust many of the hardware settings. Any adjustments are not set until you have clicked the Commit button. Other features on our web interface include Show File Upload, Formatting, and Password Protection. It is possible to adjust the standard web interface to your company or customer's preference. We can do this by adding a web interface theme. Sample themes, as well as instructions on how to use them, can be found on our website under Downloads, Resources, Web Interface Themes. Add the files to Designer, and after uploading, we can see the web interface has now a different look and feel. You can create an easy-to-use end-user interface with basic controls by uploading a custom web interface. On our website you can find some examples. I'll remove the existing theme. Add this custom web interface to Designer. And enable this feature. After uploading, I can now navigate to this custom page over here. If you type the IP address on any device, you will land on this custom page directly. As you can see, all information, like timeline and scene names, is automatically loaded from Designer. This example interface allows color and intensity overrides too. Without the need to add any more triggers. We can now close Designer, and remove the computer from the network. I'll save my file for future use, but I can also always download it from the controller. The controller will continue to operate autonomously. It will respond to any programmed triggers, like clock, system integration, or manual override commands given via the web interface. You now have all the information you need to get started with your project. There are four more videos in this Getting Started series that can help you on your way. Working with Touch Input Scaling a Faro System Working with VLC slash VLC Plus Working with DALI Thank you for watching, and if you have questions please contact us at support at